Okay. Here is T1J. Why aren't there more Socialist black socialists? America. I think that there is a leftist argument against identity politics or whatever, uh, whatever people consider to be identity politics. Okay. Those voices were silenced. And uh, if they were white voices, they were silenced. If they were black voices, they were killed. I think that that is a genuinely interesting conversation, which plays a central role in this. Why aren't there more black socialists uh, video? A popular Twitch streamer known as Hassan Abi reacted to my last video and I wanted to take a look at his comments. So I guess I'm reacting to his reaction. Now, I don't normally make videos like this because they're usually associated with drama and debate lords and people trying to dunk on each other. This dude doesn't know what the f he's talking about. And I cannot even begin to express how uninterested in that type of thing I am. In fact, the only reason that I even considered making this video is because Hassan Hassan's commentary was actually quite thoughtful and interesting. Anyway, let's get on to it. As you might imagine, it would probably be better if you went and watched my last video first. I'll put a little thingy up in the corner that you can click on. But I mean, it's your life. Do whatever you want. But this whole time in the background, there were these little voices, little hands raising up in the back of the class. Well, if this system is so bad and causes so much inequality, why don't we like do a different one? No one really took these voices too seriously. And depending on what era of history it was, saying shit like that could literally be considered treason. But with the advent of the internet and social media, these voices got louder. I think the main point, main point of this video is that those voices were silenced and uh if they were white voices they were silenced if they were black voices they were killed i don't know a lot of people a lot of socialist thinkers including black socialist and communist thinkers have seen the environment uh ripe for radicalization uh, and the revolutionary potential of uh of of uh, black people in america and they were correct and there is historic precedent uh, precedent for this, but of course, the the American government was not too fond of of uh, black leftist movements. Now, early on in the video, Hassan I think predicts that I'm going to discuss how it's a lot different to be a black socialist in America than to be a white socialist because historically black socialist movements have been heavily targeted by the government and among other groups and black socialists very often risked being killed if not permanently silenced in other ways. Some of the primary targets of the FBI's illegal COINTELPRO investigations in the 60s and 70s were the Black Panther Party and other black socialist individuals and groups. Through COINTELPRO and other such programs, the FBI directly oversaw the legit murder of black people, including Fred Hampton and Malcolm X. And when you research the history of black socialism in America, it's really hard to find anything after the civil rights era because the government shut it all down. However, I don't actually talk about that in the video. Maybe you could argue that I should have, but I'm not convinced that that is the main reason why there aren't more black socialists. And also, I didn't want to sound sensationalist and dramatic by implying that more black people would be socialists if they weren't afraid of being killed by the government. Like, that's something black people just have to worry about in general, whether or not you are a socialist. It's immoral and wrong that the top one tenth of one percent in this country own almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%. There's debate about just how socialist his actual policy proposals are. Sanders supported large- They were not. They, they, were, they were, in every sense of the word, trying to bring America into a 21st century social democracy status with, with, with robust social safety nets, and that's it. And that was is still, uh, I think, 
a very smart thing to do and and uh i fully supported him and will forever fully support him so yeah i i agree with hassan here i think you know when bernie sanders was running for president a, a thing you heard a lot is a common thing people said it was like well you know he's not really a socialist he says he's a None socialist of his policies are socialist so he, mu he must not really maybe he doesn't understand what socialism is or maybe he means social democrat instead of democratic socialist but really when you think about it for a little bit and when you look into it that's really an unsophisticated way to think about the whole situation. I think Bernie Sanders was A, just trying to be practical about what he could get done in this country, in this era, like quickly. But also, as I said in the video, this is perfectly consistent with the goals of many democratic socialist groups, including the DSA, where you push forward progressive policies to incrementally move your way towards the socialist system that you want. And if you couldn't tell by my tone, I respect that a lot more than the people who just want to burn everything down and start over. Uh, that's just not practical. And, and again, I think it's very unsophisticated. There are real people out there in the world who are struggling. And I think we should do whatever we can to help people, even if it's just a little bit, because people need whatever they can get. People don't have time to wait for your revolution. People still need to eat and still need places to live and still need basic necessities. The core of the, the question is about, as president, what would you do with the rise of white supremacist violence right. to protect our communities? Absolutely. Who I, I know I date myself a little bit here, but I actually was at the March on Washington with Dr. King back in 1963. This man used the I have a black friend defense about Martin Luther King Jr. The political. But it's true. Okay, so I got a lot of comments about that. First of all, that was mostly a joke. And it is true that Bernie Sanders was active in the civil rights era and marched with Martin Luther King Jr. But the issue and the reason that I use that clip is because Bernie Sanders essentially was implying that part of the reason that he would be a good candidate for black voters is because he marched with Martin Luther King Jr. and was active in the civil rights movement. The two things are not really related. It matters that you did that, but the fact that you did that means nothing compared to whether you're going to be a good president for black people in America. It's unrelated. It is just as unrelated as a person saying, I'm not racist because I have black friends. That's the analogy I was making. I think that there is a leftist argument against identity politics or whatever, whatever people consider to be identity politics. Okay. Because it's pandering and it's bullshit. And most people I think recognize it as pandering and bullshit for the most part. So I don't know how to fix that uh, by, by fixing the communications on it. I don't know how to fix the, the comms on it. You know what I mean? So this was kind of just a little aside that he made, but I thought it was a little bit weird. Like he said multiple times that identity politics is pandering. And don't get me wrong. It is definitely true that the Democratic Party uses identity politics to pander to marginalized groups. There's no question that that is a thing. But but saying that it's pandering is not itself an argument against identity politics. That's a completely different thing. I'm not even sure if Hassan is saying that that's bad. It sounds like he's frustrated that people utilize that to pander to people, which is fair. But are you saying that we shouldn't frame policy and discussions about the experiences of different groups? That's kind of what identity politics is. And a lot of socialists do believe that. And that's kind of like what I go on to to argue against. So it could just be a simple fundamental disagreement. But saying it's pandering doesn't really address that. Also, and I'm not sure people realize this, but I do believe that most black people understand that they're being pandered to. It's not the ideal situation, obviously, but black people have been able to extract some value out of that pandering. There's no doubt that black socialist groups like the Black Panther Party had a lasting impact on American society. 
and provided value to black people through community programs. But many of the most significant steps forward for civil rights happened due to this democratic pandering. It's silly, but it's true. We got the Civil Rights Act. We got the Voting Rights Act. Well, we had the Voting Rights Act. We've gotten more black representation in government. We got a black Supreme Court justice. Like we know we're being pandered to, but the Democrats at least pretend to care about racism. And I truly do not want to come off as like going to bat for the Democrats, but I'm trying to give some ideas about why black people continue to support Democrats and continue to give the side eye to socialists. I disagree with this and I think other black people will disagree with it. They hate when SJWs do SJW shit. Now, I know Hassan didn't say this himself, but he highlighted a comment from a person in chat who seemed to imply that identity politics amounted to SJWs doing SJW shit, which I think is a really silly way to think about it. To be fair, I can't know what that person thinks SJW shit even is. To some people, any support for social justice in general is SJW shit. I don't think I have ever heard the term SJW used in good faith, but I would argue that keeping the fact that there are marginalized and oppressed groups in America and they all have specific and unique needs, keeping that at the forefront of your mind, I would argue that's a good thing to do. I don't think it's SJW shit, but maybe it is, I don't know. And this was emphasized because almost every time Bernie Sanders talked about race, he found a way to change the subject. And they are standing up today saying that we do not want young African-Americans to be afraid about walking the streets, you know, because they may get beaten up or, or, or murdered by police officers. But it goes beyond that. Uh, if you're looking at that generation today, those young people who are marching, my guess is 20, 25% of them are, do not have jobs because we're looking at massive unemployment today. Yeah. Are you looking at young people who cannot afford to go to college or coming out of school deeply in debt? We're looking at a hundred million Americans. Wait, he didn't avoid it. What the fuck? He literally is saying the plight of the black community goes beyond criminal justice reform, which is absolutely important to address. But beyond that, there are also He's not switching topics at all. It is a, a messaging issue. Like, it's definitely true that black people have more issues to think about than just criminal justice and police brutality. There are things like jobs and the economy and things like that. But in a discussion about racism and racial oppression and police brutality and things like that, that's what we want to hear you talk about. That's what we want to know what you're going to do to solve. When every time we bring up racism and the specific issues of racial oppression in America, you always turn it back to, yeah, but but the banks and, and jobs and the economy, it sounds like you're not listening. And Bernie Sanders really did do this all the time. In fact, I didn't talk about this in the original video, but that clip that I mentioned earlier where Bernie Sanders kind of displeases the crowd because he name drops Martin Luther King Jr. The reason he even brought that up is because just before that, someone had asked him a question about what he would do as president to deal with white supremacy. And he responded to that question like this. First of all, but we have got to make it very clear that the type of demagoguery we are seeing from the Trump administration is not what this country is about. And I will do everything that I can to help lead this country in a direction that ends all forms of discrimination. The, the core of the, the question is about- She had to repeat the question to him because he didn't answer it. See, here's the thing, we weren't asking you about all forms of discrimination. We were asking you specifically about racism and white supremacy. And Bernie Sanders did that kind of thing a lot. Even after the audience loudly groaned at him, Bernie still found himself unable to just focus on race for one second. I have dedicated my life to the fight against racism and sexism and discrimination of all forms. Also, there are a lot of comments with people asking why I focus so much on Bernie Sanders in this video that seem to be more generally about socialism. And really the only reason is because Bernie Sanders is a well-known 
figure who is a socialist that most people have heard of, who I also think exemplifies a lot of the argument that I was making in the video. It was just like a good character to zero in on, in my opinion. I wish there were better answers in this in this uh, subject. I wish I, I had better answers for this, but I'm white, okay? I can't speak on this uh, as adequately as I can on other things. I can, I can talk about uh, criminal justice reform, how black people are undermined through systemic racism all day, okay, till the cows come home. This might be a catch-22 because it might be innate to the very theory of socialism that these racial issues be sort of put on a, a second-tier pedestal while while we focus on the class solidarity. So really what it's gonna have to boil down to is who is right? Am I right in saying that identifying race as its own separate issue that sometimes must be separated from class, if doing that is essential to appealing to black people, is that true or is it true that socialists can find a way to convince black people that focusing on class will inevitably benefit them and that's why they should support socialism. It's gonna come down to a battle of those two ideas, I think. And I can't tell you which one is correct. Anyway, like I said, there is a, there is a breakdown in communication. I personally think that breakdown is partially backed by the media, partially backed by uh, a lot of still very much liberal capitalist black leadership within the Democratic Party's infrastructure. And beyond that, though, I don't know how to break through. And I think part of it is still better representation in this field. People immediately poo poo identity politics in like leftist circles to, some, to a certain degree. But, you know. Uh, people that come from this background are going to do a much better job of communicating the desires uh, to their own communities. But I will say that one thing that watching Hassan's reaction did make me think about that I probably should have thought more about when making my video is the impact that the media and sort of the, the history of liberal messaging, the impact that those things have on this conversation. Because I totally buy that the media plays a large role in telling people, you know, this is what black people want. This is what black people support. This is what black people should support. And so, you know, here come the socialists saying, well, maybe you should think about it this way. Maybe if you thought about it a different way from this perspective, you might come to a different conclusion. But it's 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 hard to overcome decades of uh, the media and democratic messaging framing the conversation about race in a certain way. And I'm always hesitant to be very cynical. The idea that people, black people or any people are like easily influenced or gullible or sheep who just blindly listen to whatever the media says or listen to whatever Joe Biden says. Like, I think that's pretty dangerous messaging. And sometimes it does come off as sounding like that, but it's definitely true that humans are influenced by the media and influenced by politics and politicians and that our views and the way we think about things are are shaped and, and informed by the things that we see like perhaps i can influence you to check out the sponsor of this video nebula those of you who are already subscribed to nebula may have already seen this video because going forward all of my video essays will be uploaded at least a day earlier on nebula and the same is true of many other creators on the platform if you don't already know nebula is a streaming service that is owned by its creators and i am one of those creators it's a place where you can come watch ad-free versions of videos from creators who were probably already some of your favorites anyway our goal with nebula is to have a platform Platform where creators can make the kind of content they really want to make without the stress of algorithms deciding our fates. And because of this, we're often able to provide you, the audience, with content that you might not otherwise see. In fact, alongside the ad-free versions of our YouTube videos, there's also a whole bunch of Nebula originals that you literally can't find on YouTube or anywhere else. Like I did a video a while back about how the intro sequence to The Good Place kinda creeps me out. You can only watch it on Nebula. And as usual, I've got a deal for you. If 
you go check out Nebula using my link, nebula.tv slash T1J, you can get access to all this great content for only $3 a month or $30 if you get the annual plan. So in conclusion, Nebula is a great, inexpensive way for you to support a lot of your favorite creators all at the same time, while also probably discovering tons of great new content, a lot of which you won't find elsewhere. So check out the link in the description to go ahead and sign up. Also around this point in the video, I joined the chat and, and sent a comment and uh, the people in the chat saw it. And all of a sudden the, the chat became way more positive towards me. When I wasn't there and you look at the chat, it was just a lot of criticism, a lot of, I would say outright hate. One person said the video was mid, which I thought was funny. But as soon as I joined the chat, there's fucking hearts and shit. It's like, oh, I love the video, T1J. I don't know, I just thought that was funny. At the end of the day, I am in support of anyone who is genuinely trying to make the world better and make life better for human beings. I think a lot of socialists define themselves more in opposition to capitalism than they are like pro making the world better. This is kind of the great irony because, you know, a lot of leftists are very antagonistic toward the libs. A lot of them see no possibility of agreement or middle ground with people who aren't socialists. But if in some magical world, I go to the polls and I have a choice between, hey, let's keep things exactly the way they are, or let's try a socialist society, let's give it a try. Maybe it'll make people's lives better. That's the main thing that I'm concerned about. Sure, we can debate about what's the best way to do that, but at the end of the day, I'm interested in speaking with and working with anyone that has ideas about how to make the world a better place. And that's why I think discussions like this are good. And I appreciate Hassan for taking a look at my video. And I hope you enjoyed watching my reaction to his reaction. Thanks for watching that video. I want to give a quick shout out to the homies, Jason Harrison, Samuel Jespass, Fire Tiger Rabbit Run, and Lol Squirrel. If you enjoy this channel and want to support it, you can become a homie yourself by checking out my Patreon. That's the end of the video. Stay Heiko. Bye bye.